Quilting, uh, Quilting with Nancy and On Point TV. Thank you very much for joining us. It is a um, kind of cold and wet January evening here in Michigan. Um, I hear uh, somebody here, yep, Ludington, you guys are probably getting it too. How you doing, Roxanne? And Georgia says there's an ice storm coming across Minnesota. So generally speaking, if it comes across Minnesota, it jumps onto Grant to the Lake Michigan, gets really big and heavy, and then dumps on top of Grand Rapids, just like that. So although Holland and Grand Haven get it even more. The reason I mentioned Grand Haven is I am allowed at this moment to mention to you that we are for sure having a Quilting with Nancy on point on the lake retreat. And it, yay! I, I just got the thing from Teresa today. Um, so it'll be April 12 through 19, which is a Wednesday afternoon until a Sunday morning. I've got a brand new project planned for it that has no videos on it. Um, and it'll actually, there'll be three options. There'll be a beginner, an intermediate, and an advanced version of kind of this thing. So I'm super excited. Um, we can have about depending on where people want to stay, because this place has these really fabulous, they call them cottages. They're really just like a two-story house with a kitchen and everything, but then there'll be like seven or eight people sharing these houses that are, it's just the cutest place. You guys are just going to absolutely love it. If you get the opportunity, I hope that you'll be able to come. And I must admit, you know, I'm teaching a um, quilt retreat next year out in California, and it's kind of expensive because it's California. And compared to that, this is not really that expensive. So there will be a flyer coming out soon. Um, I'm not going to send you to the Evite right yet because the I'm going to give one week for members to be able to decide whether or not they're going to come. So members, I will be sending you out an email very, very shortly that'll say, hey, this is the link. If you want to come, you guys get are going to get like, I think at five or six days ahead of everybody else. Right. So I'll, of course, there'll be more information. There'll be some cool flyers and a lot of things like that. So be looking out for that if you want to come. And I must admit, the plan is for me to be there. Like I'll be staying right there, too, but I'll be teaching 24 seven. You know, I'll be there the whole time. So if you have you know questions and stuff, I will be there. So. All right. <laughs> me, too. All right. So first things first, there was a boo boo on page four. So if you purchase the E pattern already, and if you're a quilt addict and you've already received your E pattern, I sent you an email not an hour and a half ago that had the corrected page. And it was just a matter of some of the cutting. I was having you cut things too big that you didn't need. So like, hi, Della. We got Georgia. We got Jenny. We got the Lady Kopak from Kentucky. Okay, we've got a lot. Okay, fun. All right. So if you purchased the pattern already, you should have gotten this correction page. Go to your emails, go to your spam, go to your promos. If you have not gotten the correction page, but you know that you purchased the e-pattern already, send me an email. And what's my email? Quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com. That is the best way for you to reach me if your question is more than just this long. You know, I love all the comments that we get on the videos. That is fun. And I try to answer questions. But sometimes the questions are like, how do you do? And it's this kind of long. I can't answer that in the comments. So send me an email. I get to my emails usually within 48 hours. All right. So today we are working more on the Snowflake Lone Star. Last week, so if you haven't seen the video, there's the first video. What you looking at? Oh, okay. Okay. So last week we worked on the foundation piecing of the two diamond sections. There's this section and this section. All right. And then there's, you know, within the large diamond, there's five of the wild geese and four of the pointy one. Today, we are going to work on the setting triangles and corner triangles. I also have worked on another colorway. So some people have asked, could this be made smaller? Well, sure, it could be made smaller. You could you do less diamonds. So this is a three by three diamond setting. And this is going to be end up being queen size because I plan on putting the borders that you saw in the picture, which will be February 2nd will be the video when we do that. This is a way to make it smaller. So this is what I'm calling the paradise 
flower version. I think that's right. Paradise flower. Yeah, paradise flower. Um, this will be, this is just two by two. So you can see it only has two pointy ones and two of the wild geese ones. So that's another way to make it smaller. This color version is not in the pattern, but I think I'm going to end up having to make like a little version of it that'll have that. So we'll see about that. That's not online right now. You'd have to use your own ingenuity and color sense if you wanted to do that. All right. Hello. Thank you very much, Suzanne. And Texas and California. Yeah, I'm coming. I, I'll tell you more about where I'm going to be in California later, but I know that I will be at the Long Beach Festival, Quilt Festival in Long Beach. I'll be at that this year. I haven't turned in my classes yet, so I don't know what classes I'll be teaching, but that'll be happening soon. All right. Oh, and this is what the Paradise Flower entire quilt looks like. Is that right? Okay. So this is kind of what it's going to be. And on this one, I'm not doing any of the fancy setting squares and triangles okay all right so to work on today this is the setting square you've got six pages within the pattern that are all going to be taped together to create this large piece and then one two three because this one has the big one one two three four five pages that make the setting triangles. So first things first is you need to tape that all together. Okay. Get that all taped together and then, and be sure when you do the taping together that you put the numbers on it. So transfer these numbers, be sure that you transfer the numbers because then you're going to take your freezer paper. So this is my pack of uh, Meyer freezer paper, which is our local grocery store, but you Reynolds freezer paper is fabulous. Um, Ricky Tim's actually just did a big thing about Reynolds freezer paper. And I've told people this story before because Ricky Tim's had mentioned it at a seminar that I've gone to, but that there was a time that Reynolds was going to stop making freezer paper. They just felt like nobody was using it anymore. And the quilters of the world united and said, you can't. This is a staple in my studio. And sure enough, they brought it back. So freezer paper comes 18 inches wide, you are going to have to piece a couple together because this big one is 19 and a half inches wide. Um, local newspaper office and they created my huge pieces and what, yeah, that's kind of helpful. So Georgia's, Georgia's got a really good relationship with her um, local office people. They like make copies for her and stuff like that. And I'm sure yours would too. So pretty much usually it just comes down to who's going to ask for it. So this is about 19 and a half inches. This is my drawn onto the freezer paper. All right. So when I do it, I draw it on, I write the numbers, I write the color and the size that I'm going to need. And you only need one of these, although it is technically foundation piece, you only need one because of the technique that I'm going to show you today. Okay. Then there is the setting triangle version. So now I can get rid of this one and this one, I'm trying to clean off my table a little bit. And I can get rid of this clear this all off because Athena and I'm going to be going back and forth back and forth so this is the setting triangle and again I wrote the size that I need and the color so that when I go back to do more work on this I actually have the information there you only need one this is what we're going to be creating with it this is the setting square and you'll notice here on the top and on your left side over here where my finger is after you make the setting square you then add a one and a half inch coping strip to the top of it and that is going to stabilize it because this edge is an all bias edge and i certainly don't want that on the corners of my quilt even before i do the borders so i did create it with coping strips on the setting triangles the coping trip strip goes across the top. Now, something else to notice. There is a lot of fabric used in this. And in the process, when I'm doing this big one and I'm going to show you how you trim it, you will be trimming off some pretty hefty chunks of fabric. I found 
that I was glad that I had not cut all the pieces out originally. I worked on two of the large ones and there were some pretty substantial size pieces cut off from those. I used some of those were big enough to use for the setting triangles. So the instructions are there and the fabric is there for you to cut these all whole pieces, but I'm gonna recommend that you spray size everything first, just like always, and then cut out a few of what you need for the big pieces and then see if any of the leftovers actually fit the smaller triangle section. That'll just save you a little bit of fabric. You'll have a little bit to take home later, all right? So this one, we're gonna leave there. We're gonna deal with this. Oh, which led me to, actually, this is a perfect one. The dark fabrics here, there are some really strange pieces left over. Can you tell that I pieced this right here? I don't think you can. Can you tell? that I pieced a seam right here. I don't think you can. I didn't want to have these big chunks of fabric go to waste, but yet they weren't quite big enough to do what I really needed to do with it. So I just took some of the pieces and pieced them together. Um, I'm very happy with that. It, for me, the idea of saving more fabric, having more fabric left over um, was more important. So there's a something that you can do. Or if you make a mistake and you find out it's a little bit small, yeah, just add another piece to it. Nobody will ever notice, all right? So we're gonna leave this one. This is what we're gonna do the setting set in seam with. So I'll take that one later. Um, I don't think we'll be doing that with this. So let's move that. And this will go here. Oh my goodness. So I have all of my pieces for my setting triangle. And this is going to be a different form of foundation piecing. We are now going to the machine. We, well, let me see, hello from Illinois, I think that, yeah. Where can I find the pattern? On the website where you can find all of my books in pattern. www.onpoint-tv.com under books and patterns. That's where you find all the books and patterns. We are working on a new website, but that website will always, always be there. So go ahead to that. So, all right, we're heading to the machine. Okay, come this way, come this way. All right, now as long as I had you coming this way too, I thought I would show you this down on the table. So the setting of the diamonds. So here is one of the diamond sections and the idea, oops, what'd you do? Sorry for that little wiggle. Oh, don't get seasick people, all right? So this is kind of the layout that you'll do for the large diamonds. And just in terms of the piecing of it, when you're piecing this diamond onto this diamond, flip it over and here, right here, you can see this quarter of an inch. So you need that point to stick out a quarter of an inch there and then come over here to this side and make that one stick out a quarter of an inch, right? Oh, and these are trimmed down to five inches each. So this one is a little bigger because it's got a lot of bias edges. So even though I spray size it, it kind of stretches itself out a bit. So then this would be ready to piece, all right? And then once these are all pieced, then you put the rows together, which led me to that I do have a book. It's a Lone Star chart. Now keep in mind, this does not have instructions for a Lone Star quilt. I have an entire video series you can go back to and watch the entire video series. And it was maybe six or eight different videos. Um, and then there's a playlist. So if you want to know more about the precision of Lone Stars, how you do a traditional Lone Star, that idea, then you want to hit those videos. But if you're looking for Lone Stars, the Lone Star chart book, which is also on the website, um, www.onpoint-tv, this tells you no matter what size Lone Star you're making, you get the color charts, you get the sizes for making all the different sizes of Lone Star, all the way up to a 10 by 10, all right? So we'll put that away. Okay, now I'm gonna take these and put these over there because we won't need those. We are gonna start with this. I think we're gonna start with the pressing surface. Let's see if I can put that somewhere. Uh, maybe, maybe not. All right, we planned everything except for where I was going to put the cutting mat when I wasn't using it. All right, so here is 
my my setting triangle all drawn out on the freezer paper. I'm going to start with the number one, just like always. The number one is a four and a half by 14 inch piece of dark blue. Here's my section, all right? I've already spray sized it. Then my number two is a medium. So I need the blue to be wrong side to the freezer paper. So this is the wrong side of the blue. I have folded back on the sole line and I'm gonna place it so that it is a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the fold. Now I'm gonna take the number two piece, which is the medium blue, and I'm gonna place that so that it lines up with the edge, but comes all the way down here to the bottom. And you'll see that I've, it doesn't need to go as high as the dark blue. The dark blue has to go to this point. The medium blue doesn't. So it'll go just that far. Then I'm gonna pin it with the freezer paper folded back. And I pin it right there on the fold. Oops, before I do that, hold on. Before I pin it, hopefully my iron is still hot. So excuse me, Athena. All right, let's get that baby hot. And I don't want any steam on it. Okay. Before I put the pins in, I am going to press the freezer paper. I'm pressing on the dull side, pressing the shiny side to the wrong side. Was that all confusing enough? Of the dark blue. So the idea of freezer paper is it has a waxy-ish, plastic-ish, I don't know what it's made of, surface that when you press it with a hot iron, you have to be sure that your iron is hot. So I have mine all the way on eight. It's heating up, but I think it's hot enough. And I want to press that to it. Right. Now I can fold it back right on the line and line it up with the medium blue fabric, oops, I didn't quite line that up good enough when I pressed it, it moved. Because I want it to be a quarter of an inch away, so I'm gonna do that one more time. Keep that in place this time. I think it moved because I have to reach over here to get the iron. You know, we need a place over here that I can put my iron. There's a nice idea. We don't really have a place, so I'm just not gonna, I'm gonna well, keep reaching. To don't, no, I don't, no, I don't want you to trip on the cord. All right, there, now it's pressed, so it's a quarter of an inch from the edge. Now I am going to pin the medium blue right sides to the dark blue, and I pin through the freezer paper. You cannot count on the freezer paper to hold 100% to the things that you press it to, so I'm literally pinning through the freezer paper and the seam at the same time with a approximate quarter inch seam allowance. All right, so let's move this out of the way and move this up here. I've already got my machine set up to the quarter of an inch. I've got my guidelines on there. And when you're piecing this, the idea is yes, you're a quarter of an inch away, but more importantly is that you are stitching right next to the freezer paper. You are actually, oops, I wanna actually make my stitch length a little bit smaller. Beep, beep, there it is, all right? So it is a little bit um, short of the freezer paper. Now, chances are you are going to accidentally stitch into the freezer paper fold. That's okay, it's not gonna hurt it. You're gonna be able to take it right out. Um, but I use my guide to be a quarter of an inch there. But yet more importantly than the guide is that I am stitching next to the freezer paper. All the way to the end. And go off onto my ender. And then we will go back to our ironing surface. Okay. All right, so this is the line that I've stitched. I did do it in black, so I don't know that you can see it, but right next to the freezer paper. 
technically I can take that freezer paper completely off, but I don't want to. It's stuck to it and I need it to be stuck to it so that when I do this next part, I've unfolded my freezer paper. Now I flip it over and now I can press the medium blue down to the freezer paper. And again, you need to give it a second. You can't like just sweep it over. You need to give that plastic enough time. Now you're only gonna make one of these freezer paper templates and it can definitely press down four times for the four that you have to make, but it's gonna get a little bit less adhesive every time. All right, oops, now I gotta move this out of the way. All right, so now it is completely pressed down. Now I need my my cutting mat, and if you will just stay there one second, Athena, I forgot a very important tool. There it is. All right. Okay, this one will work. All right, it's maybe bigger than I want to use because I know I had my other one somewhere. I just don't know where. All right. This is the very important tool. This is an add-a-quarter ruler. Add a quarter rulers come in many different sizes. I don't even know if this one is actually available anymore, but when I asked Laura at Fireside Quilts, I said, hey, can you get the 18 inch add a quarter ruler? She goes, that's the only one I ever used. I'm like, Laura, but sometimes paper piecing is small stuff. I mean, last week we were using the add an eighth and that's the eighth inch or there's the six inch. She's like, oh no, I love my big 18 inch. So I'm not sure if she has them. I would recommend that if all you have in your add a quarter series of rulers is the six inch, the, for this at least, you might get the 12 inch. I'm gonna show you two different ways that you can do this though. But I pulled out my 18 inch add a quarter ruler. Why? Because I wanted to, and I've never used it before. I've probably had it for five years and it never had a chance to use it. So I was pretty excited when I got to use it. It's like, who doesn't wanna use their at a quarter 18 inch okay so now i'm going to turn this over to the paper side here is the seam that i technically just sewed on that line should be on or pretty darn close to the stitching line and now i'm going to come over here to do the fold for the placement of my number three right here oops all right so the first one we didn't have to do the fold because there was we just lined up the seam this time we have to do the fold so i'm going to fold on the number three line which is here's my number one my number two now is my number three fold it back crease it cut using a 60 millimeter for this. This is a little overkill, but it does a job. And this is what I was talking about, that there's some big pieces left over. Um, there were some pretty hefty chunks like this, and sometimes I just pieced them together. I also had to make more blocks, so from this I actually cut out some of the pieces I needed for the piece um, diamond sections. But just just know that there is, that it's there. All right, am I hitting the trash can if I toss this right back yep. there, Athena? Okay. All right, so now that is trimmed to the quarter of an inch. Now I'm gonna get my next fabric, which is my medium. I'm gonna place it right side up because then it will be right side to my dark blue and lay that quarter of an inch right on it. There. And then I'm going to pin again. Now this particular type of foundation piecing, I didn't invent this by any means. Um, it's been around for a long time. Some people actually use this idea of folding back on all of the foundation piecing that they do. Now, I obviously sew through the paper, but some people do this idea all the time. I definitely like this idea when I'm doing larger pieces like this, all right? So now I'm gonna scooch that out of the way. Come on in, Athena. She's coming, she's coming. Oh, RC is there. So if Athena like seems to bobble, it's not her, it's RC. He's, he is, he takes, he's a large mass. <laughs> we do not call him F-A-T though, because that's not nice. But he is a large moving mass. So again, I'm trying to kind of stick with that quarter inch, but most importantly, stitching right next to the freezer paper. All right, and now we can go back to the table after I find my 
I don't know where my other lead. Oh, there it is. I knew I had another one. Another leader ender kind of guy. Get this baby off. He's, are you showing him the mask? All right, but now you're showing him my painted floor, too. <laughs> that was the mask. Oh, he's the same color as the rug. Yeah. He's so adorable. He just can't help how cute he is. All right. So let's get this out of the way again. Then I can unfold the freezer paper. Unfold the fabric. And press it over. Okay, holding it down for some time. Now, what I have also found is that I want to put some pins in the fabric through the freezer paper occasionally because you don't want it to accidentally fall off. It would just, not that you wouldn't be able to recover from it, it would just be a little bit of a pain if it actually came disconnected from the freezer paper altogether. So try not to let that happen, all right? So I've done number three. Now I can bring back in my cutting board. Here is my number four, is gonna be the snowflake fabric. Fold that back. Use my add a quarter, and we're just going to do one more of these until we go and do the big one, too. Trim that back. You like can mention here's you know pretty. Oops, I've got a little notch in my uh, on your blade. Blade. I bumped into a pin. Oh man, I hate it when that happens. I know you all hate it when that happens too. And then this is going to be the snowflake pattern. So again, with the piece that is here. You want to line it up so at the top, it's even with the freezer paper. And then it'll come down a little extra at the bottom. You want to make sure that it is coming up here a little bit. Then we'll do the pinning. And then we would do the sewing. All right. So once you get this piece completely pieced, and you'll, you'll just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, Keep in mind that these outside this section here is actually cut from a 12 by 12 triangle. So everything else is done in strips, but this one here is actually done as one big piece. And that's one that I pieced together because I didn't want to waste fabric. All right. So that's how you do the foundation piecing. I told you that there was a different way to do it. That's how we do it. Now I want to take you back to the cutting board so I can show you something else with this whole piecing. So Athena's doing her best to be super backwards walking. No cat was back there, you were safe. <laughs> All right, so this one, I'm gonna put this one here because I shouldn't need that one anymore. All right, she's carefully trying to get it up. Actually, that looked, oh, you can see all of my supply wow, of stuff up there. <laughs> That's where I, up above that shelf is where, is it gonna stay? She's kind of worried it's going to wobble. Okay. Above that shelf is where I keep things like rolls of um, fusible and batting and pillow forms and just lots of other things. All right. Just as she gets set, I'm going to start moving. Okay. So this would be the large scale size one. I just want to show you something with that. For instance, this outside piece, this is a big 8 by 21 inch piece. When it goes on, you're going to have this big section left over, all right? Because we got to do this one because I got to trim this one down with you, all right? So we're working. The last one I have to put on is just this last section. You see where I put those pins every once in a while just so that I don't, the freezer paper doesn't come all the way apart? Oh, I don't know if I can. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to fold this back. I told you that I would show you another way to trim these. Now this is the 12 inch add a quarter. Look, I have the small, the medium, and the bohemoth. That is bohemoth. Yeah, it is bohemoth. I love it. So for trimming this, of course, that's what the um, 18 inch would be good for. Although it's still not long enough, but even the small one, if you had it, you could go slide, 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 cut. But you also could do it, I don't want to cut anything accidentally, with the ruler. This happens to be a ruler that I have, an OmniGrid, that is 24 by 3 and a half. So you could do this with your 24. But you can just line it up at the quarter of an inch. 
So the fold of the paper is on the quarter of an inch. Oh, trim that one all the way to the end. So I should look at some comments. What do we got? Any questions? Um, Texas, Illinois. Yep, blah, blah, blah. Greetings from Germany. I know it's it's wow. Great. Okay, I'm sorry. You can watch it later if you fall asleep. I understand. Um, okay, da, 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 okay, hello from Northern Ontario, Canada. Athena really wants to go to Canada someday. She really, really does. Um, she actually works with the Canadian division of Gordon Foods, but she's never stepped her toe in Canada yet. We're, yes. we're working on it. That'll happen. All right. So now I'm going to take this one big piece. I'm going to do just like I've been doing all along. I'm going to line that up on the quarter inch of the paper. Iron that in. Or I'm sorry, pin that in so that everything is in there. And then it would be ready to, for me to go to the sewing machine, but I don't think I need to do that. I think that we'll be good with that because once you get them all done, then you are gonna spray size the, get these babies really, really stiff. Mine are really very, very stiff. And you wanna do that before you trim them down to their necessary size. And I believe this big square, you could use I'll show you how I did it and then what you could do. The big square, you can take your paper, lay it down and trim it out. What I did is I took, talking about bohemian things, oh, I took my Omnigrid, oh, my glow tape moved. Bring it closer to you. Yep. I took my large Omnigrid, so this is the 20 and a half inch. I took that and I put my glow tape on here at 19 and a half inches. And then I measured it that way using the diagonal of my ruler running right down the middle, trimmed it down to 19 and a half inches. Um, you know, if you don't have one of these yet, I know you have family that loves you. Tell them that you need this for Christmas, Valentine's birthday, anniversary, just because they love you, because they're not cheap. They're like over 50 bucks, even if you find them on sale. So look into that. Then you're going to take the one and a half inch strips. And like I mentioned earlier, add that to the left and top side. Question. Yes. George has been having trouble finding them. Where can she find it? You should be able to find but you know, the reason I know why you're having trouble finding it, because online shops don't want to ship that. So you're not going to find it at an, I don't think you're going to find it at an online shop. You're going to have to find it at a store. And I know you live in Boonesville, so you might not be able to find it quickly. But I do know that like when you go to big shows, if you get a chance to go to one of those, oh, and I'll be teaching at the AQS show in Grand Rapids, so there's another time maybe it could come, but at the big shows, there's usually somebody selling it, or when you come to the retreat, we can have it special ordered for you. Okay, that was the best idea I ever had. We'll have, Laura, we'll have it there for you, so then we won't have to ship it, although if you're flying, then we'll have to deal with something else. We will find a way. We will make it happen. All right, local quilt, yep, local quilt shops can order them for you. And that's what I'm almost always going to tell you that is try to get to your local quilt shop to make that happen. All right, so the triangle one is not so easy to trim just with a ruler. So use your paper template. The paper template has the, um, the dotted line here on the outside. I took it, laid it down onto my design pinned it in places a few places so then I could trim it out and then added the strip to the top, all right? That is how you create the setting triangles and the setting squares. So how would you like to learn how to set them in to the quilt? That is our next thing. So we're gonna go back to the sewing machine and I'm gonna show you how to do the set in seam. So. Let's go, I think I'm gonna need this. Okay, all right, let's head on over. 
I'm going to move this out of the way. Let me move this out of the way and get this. Now, I tried to think of a way that you guys were going to best be able to see what I was doing, and I decided that Athena and I can make this work. Okay. All right. Step one is to take your large diamond sections and piece them into sets of two. And I do explain this in the pattern. So you're going to piece that into a set of two. You're going to set, press that seam open. So it will then look like this. So it is set of two. And I always set my setting triangles in, and then I set in my setting squares. So that's how I'm going to recommend you do it. Take your, when you are piecing this, got to go back to this a second. When you are piecing this, at the top intersection here, you are going to start sewing a quarter of an inch in. You're not going to start sewing right there at the edge. Actually start a quarter of an inch in. If you start from the edge, it still works. You can just pluck those out because that's what I do when I do Lemoyne stars. But for this, there's not that many. I usually start a quarter of an inch in. Press that seam open. Okay. So then you can see here, I've got this little quarter of an inch um, opening right there. On your setting triangles and squares on the corner itself, you want to mark a quarter inch intersection. So using the pencil, I think, can you see that? A white one would have been better, but I didn't. No, yes, I do. I've got one right here. Okay, I've got a white one. Duh. All right. So a quarter of an inch mark here. Trying to make it really, really bold. There. Yeah. yeah that's and a quarter of an inch mark here. So literally measuring a quarter of an inch in from the corner. So this is my turning point. That's what's important when you're doing a set in seam. Um, don't be afraid of set in seams. You can do it. But this is your turning point. Okay. Lay the piece down so that it looks like a Y. So this has created a Y here, here, and then the long center. Here is the piece that I am setting it in. Now we need to pick up the right hand side diamond and flip it over on top of the piece that we're setting and then bring the bottom out. So now we're looking at the wrong side of this. I think that's our pizza. Please ignore the ding dong. I thought Bill said he was going to go pick it up. Oh, yeah. All right. So we're lining that up there. Now we're taking this piece and we're folding it back. That was that intersection that we had that was open. Oops. Okay. And I'm going to line it up so I can see the crisscross, the hash mark. Okay. I'm making that intersection be right at that hash mark. My pin is in it, and the, I've just brought that intersection right up to it. Okay, then I'm going to put a pin right in there. Then I'm going to lay it down. Got a little flipping going on here, but I'll fix that. Going to lay it down. Now I have designed it so it's about a half of an inch or so shy of the coping strip. So it's not going to go all the way to the point. It's going to be a half of an inch or so shy. And pin that. Okay. Now take your time and put a few pins in. Oop, did the Athena just go flying all over? Sorry, oh. sorry about that. <laughs> I don't know why that does that sometimes. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I'll fix this. You've turned around too many times? Yeah, yeah. So okay, so you're straight. All right, because I'm ready to move to the machine anyway. Yeah, yeah we can move. Okay, it. all right. I'm good now. Okay, so that. now I'm going to scooch this way out of the way so Athena can really get in here. And we're going to come to the machine. All right. So I have my diamond section on top, my setting section underneath, and I'm ready to start sewing. And I'm using the open toe applique foot because I like it, um, but mostly so that you can see where I'm going to turn. Okay. So I'm just going to sew with a nice stamped quarter of an inch seam allowance like normal. Bill just popped a top on a 
soda up there. He ordered pizza. I thought he was going to get it. But, yeah. Gorgeous. Is that least you're feeding the peanuts? <laughs> yes. Yes. We had her last week, too. We yeah. actually took her out last we week. We did. You know, I can technically that. speaking, she's family, so she has to help me. But in reality, yeah. she does get paid. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So coming to the end. Taking my time with that. Keep in mind, this is a bias edge, so treat it very, very gently. I'm coming to the intersection, and I have folded down the other part of the Y as I come to it. And this is the tricky part. As I come to it, I'm going to leave that pin in. I'm going to very, very slowly stitch until I am no longer on the diamond section. I am only in the setting triangle section right there where that pencil marking was my needle is literally right in the crosshairs of that pencil mark now i lift the presser foot and spin this around spin 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 can let that go flat now i spin it around until so i'm going to flip this up and you're going to look under okay until the setting triangle underneath is coming straight forward so you can yep. see that it's right there next to the guideline right? It's lined up. Now I can put this back. Now I'm going to take and spin the diamond. Now this is a large diamond, so take your time with it. Go spin, spin, spin. Keep moving it to the back so the fold is being created in the back. The spin, and you're going to keep spinning until, voila, now the diamond sections are lined up with the piece underneath. So it takes a little bit of time, get yourself organized. I can feel underneath. I wanna make sure those seams, I'm not running over a seam. Okay, I'll get you one sec, right there. There, all right. So moving it so that this section is still straight coming toward me, right? My diamond section, there's a fold happening back here, a fold so that this part of the diamond can move right into position. Oh, of course, I'm having a smidge of a difficulty, which y'all will have. I mean, there's just no way there. All right. So I have positioned it so that the very first stitch will be on the second diamond section. Press her foot down, needle down. Now I am on the other diamond section. It's all lined up. Once you get that first stitch in, which can take, I mean, if you have 12 extra hands handy, that would be nice to have. Um, it's helpful having the, I've got an automatic presser foot, so I don't have to pick it up and put it down. So once you have that center one done, the very first stitch, then it's just a matter of going a little ways. Then I come to the end, and I'm going to position this end just like the um, I positioned it on the other end, so it's about a half inch down in this design. Sometimes the point will come directly to the end. Most of the time when I design them, I don't design them so they come right to the end. I like it to have a little bit of a floating. I'm going to put a couple of pins in here, which is why my pin cushion is so handy, because my pins are right where I need them to be. There it is. Right, right there. Beep. This is the peach version. There we go now, you know. Right. And looks like the bottom section has gotten stretched. Even with all the sizing I do, it stretches a little bit, but that's all right. You see how it's kind of a little bit waffly under there? Watch this just ease it in because it's a bias edge. Bias edges ease in very easily. Ease in easily. I'm sure there's a poem out there about that somewhere. Oh, I am going to sew right over that pin. Didn't have to, but it was there, so I did. This one, oops, trying to get this edge lined up again. There. I know, that's why I didn't, that's why I ran over the pin, because it was like, otherwise I'd have to reach right in front of the picture. There. And so, till the end. Cut that baby off, because that's going to be the last sewing that we do now. All right, so let's head back up to the cutting table, to the big one. Oh, the big one? Okay. Yeah, backing, backing, yeah. backing. Here, I try to put something better than my belly to look at. <laughs> A little bit jiggly. 
get this off of there. All right, so what are we showing now? All right, because I watched the delay is a little bit. Um, yeah. Oh, don't thank you, Georgia. Just bought your pattern for this. Never done this before. So if you are new to Callie, if you're new to paper piecing, I do those instructions last week, but I also have a video out there that's one of the top five most viewed videos on my site on basic paper piecing. Maybe be sure you watch that first. So you get the concept of simple paper piecing so then these won't be quite as scary. All right. Um, I'll back stitch and take it out. Yeah, it works either way. All right, so this is what we have done. So I have pieced this in. Now, I don't ha can't iron it here because I don't have an ironing surface, but with this, I wanna iron it toward the setting triangle. There are so many seams in the diamond sections that it would just be too much bulk on bulk. So I would press it toward the setting triangle in this case and it'll look like that. And there's my intersection. Um, as close to perfect as um, I think it can be made. I know it's not ever gonna be perfect, but yeah, I'm pretty good at this. I do love doing set and seam so. And so then this would be all pressed like that. Then you're done. Well, okay, you're not totally done. You need to do three more of these. So I always do the setting triangles first, like this. Then I piece those sets of two together then I put in the corner. Now I did it differently here because I needed to get something hung up, but I'll then take these two sections, put in a corner triangle, then put the two halves together and put in the final two corner triangles. So then on February 2nd, we'll be back here again where I'll be teaching you how to do a six strip mitered corner border. Because on this quilt, you know, I played with the design on and on and on. And those people that are part of the EQ membership, you saw me doing that. Um, so we came up with different designs. I like this one. So the pattern bar at Brenda is on the website, like always. So it's www.onpoint-tv.com. It is the only place to get my e-patterns. And my printed patterns are either on my website or you can get them at Fireside Quilts. But that's it. I don't sell on other places because I, I don't know, because we don't. We're going to go with that. Um, yep, that's the best excuse I got. All right, so thank you very, oh, she liked it. I got the applauses on there from Brazil. Applauses from Brazil. Very cool. So there you have it. So at this point, you have the instructions that you need for paper piecing the diamonds, putting the setting triangles together with this different type of foundation piecing, and then your center. So I'm gonna give you two weeks. Yeah, I'm gonna give you two weeks to get the entire center of the quilt done so that you will be prepared to put on the mitered border and it'll be a six strip mitered border. Um, yep, I won't be at Rondo, California this year, but I would, cause that actually just started, so I wouldn't be here if I were there. Um, but I do expect to be there next year. All right, anything else gorgeous? Yes, thank you very much. EQ training, thank you very much. I think that we're done. I can smell the pizza upstairs. Bill has gotten me the pizza, us the pizza, and a glass of wine is calling my name. So thank you very much for watching. Thumbs up, just like Georgia said. Leave a comment, but not too long of questions. I can answer little questions if you have a question. Send it to quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com. Please be sure that you subscribe to the channel and try to find that notifications bell. Once you hit subscribe, then it gives you, there's this little bell. You got to click on that. And if you click on that, you will just get a little notification on YouTube going, hey, Nancy's got a new video or Nancy's going to be going live. All right. Thank you all very much. I really appreciate you watching. Have a great night.